Last year, Tesla became the first automaker in history and one of very few companies worldwide to be valued over $1 trillion. That means it surpassed the combined value of its 10 nearest competitors. Now, despite billions of dollars in new spending and promises to spend billions more from traditional automakers to build out their EV capabilities, it's not just market cap where Tesla remains way up in front. Last year, Tesla was responsible for one in every five electric cars leaving showrooms over the entire planet. That kind of dominance was last seen only once during the time of the Model T Ford. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to the channel, you new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. Great to have you all. So big shout out to our Patreon supporters of the channel. Thank you for supporting the channel. I really appreciate your support. And if you want to join the channel and support us as well in 2022, I will put a link in the description below that you can click on and you can support us as well. Now, despite the emergence of popular sub US $5,000 cars, like the Wuling Honglan Mini EV in China, the Model 3, which sells for 10 times that amount in most configurations, and even more in some, is the best-selling electric vehicle worldwide. The 3 is also number one in Europe, outselling its nearest rival, the Renault Zoe, two to one. Two to one. And that's before the opening of Tesla's first factory on the continent, which is just ludicrous and insane. It shows you how much of a head start Tesla really has in the electric vehicle industry, in spite of what the naysayers would like you to believe, they do have a very big lead. Now, the recent news that Tesla will be using 4680 battery cells in the vehicles they're already currently producing in Texas, in the Model Y, and using a structural battery pack, and using gigacasting to build the body of the vehicle shows you just how advanced Tesla's EVs are truly becoming. Now, its dominance is even more noticeable in terms of its raw battery power. Tesla accounts for more than a quarter of all the battery power found in passenger cars hitting the roads last year. More than a quarter of all cars' battery capacity worldwide. That is staggering. It's also double the kilowatt hours of its nearest competitor, Volkswagen, across all of the German company's brands. And that's a lot of brands. In fact, last year, Model 3s alone dispense as much battery power as all of the Volkswagens, including those built by FAW and SAIC under Chinese joint ventures, Porsches, Audis, Skodas, and Seats combined. Now, against world number two car badge, BYD, Tesla also remains very far ahead. The lead is made more remarkable by the fact that the US company delivered more LFP battery-powered cars last year than BYD, which is the world's number two manufacturer of the cobalt and nickel-free power packs and is credited with much of the advances in the technology. However, I should point out a very important fact. Tesla has recently signed a deal with Goshan High Tech, which is owned in part, 26% of that company is owned by Volkswagen. Now, Goshan High Tech will build a factory or multiple factories in the United States for Tesla to produce lithium iron phosphate batteries, a total of 200 gigawatt hours per year with an energy density of 210 watts per kilo, which is truly staggering. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about that revelation. Now, BYD, backed by Warren Buffett through an 8% stake, has gone all in on LFP batteries, vowing to use the technology across their entire car range. In 2021, 
it got over 80% of the way there considering its overall sales mix. And it more than doubled the sales of its electric cars throughout the last 12 months. Now, as for battery metals, Tesla CEO Elon Musk is right to be worried about nickel. Tesla deployed 27% of the entire world's battery nickel, despite the fact that overall LFP accounts for more than a quarter of the kilowatt hours in all of its vehicles sold last year. Tesla still does not sell LFP powered models currently in North America. Like I said before, though, that is set to change. Remember, keep this in mind. Elon Musk said on numerous occasions when asked what the battery chemistry of the future is, LFP. Now, despite selling half the number of BEVs than Tesla, thanks to the absence of LFP in its lineup, Volkswagen deployed more cobalt and on a relative basis, more metals across its brands. That's in part due to high performance vehicles like the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron, some of which come equipped with higher nickel NCM batteries where cobalt can represent up to 20% of the metal mix. And this is one of the key areas where Tesla and BYD have a significant advantage over their German rival. Clearly, as you can see from what we've talked about here, BYD and Tesla plan on having at least 50% for Tesla and at least 95% for BYD of their electric cars eventually become powered by LFP batteries, which do not need nickel and do not need cobalt. And that is where both of those companies have an advantage. Now at Tesla's fourth quarter earnings call, which was held over the past 24 hours, Tesla made one very important point. They said they recognize that there are a lot of competitors now for the company. But the key challenge will not be necessarily the ability of their competitors' vehicles, but their competitors' ability to actually deploy more batteries. And this is one area where BYD and Tesla have a significant advantage over Volkswagen. For example, Tesla has battery supply contracts with Panasonic in North America and Japan. They have supply contracts with LG Chem or LG Energy Solutions from South Korea. They have supply contract with CATL, the largest battery manufacturer in the world. And by the way, CATL just completed 60% deployment of their new factory just down the road from Tesla's Gigafactory in Shanghai. And it took them only three months to reach a level of 50 gigawatt hour production per year. Those batteries, by the way, are primarily LFP powered. In addition to CATL, Tesla has also signed a contract with BYD for 10 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries next year. Now, what about BYD? Well, not many people know what exactly BYD are up to, but I can tell you now that they finished building six new battery factories last year. And they plan to build a whole lot more this year after acquiring land all over China in order to build those factories as soon as possible. Now remember, Tesla also has its own battery cells coming online very soon. It's currently building vehicles in Texas using 4680 battery cells that we believe are manufactured there. In addition, they have their Cato Road battery facility. In addition to that, they are also planning on building battery cells in their Gigafactory in Germany. Now, while, while Volkswagen does own 26% of Groschon High Tech, they don't currently have anywhere near the battery capacity potential that it looks as though BYD and Tesla will have over the coming years. And that, my friends, is where BYD and Tesla have an advantage over pretty much all of their peers. Now, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Am I waffling on here? Or do you agree that this is a big advantage for BYD and Tesla, especially the fact that they're using LFP cells? I think that is a huge advantage. But let me know in the comment section what you think. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.